I'm Madison, and today we're talking about museum anthropology. This is slightly problematic, but we're getting better. Museums in North America are popular destinations for entertainment and education that have been part of Western society for hundreds of years. They have come to be incredibly trusted and well-liked, but most people don't really have a reason to give museums much thought outside of a school field trip or an occasional visit. And I used to be one of those people. Even when I was volunteering in museums while getting my bachelor's degree in anthropology, I didn't know the extent of the bias and racism in museums. People shouldn't have to get a master's degree in museum anthropology to learn this, but that's exactly why I'm sharing this with you. Hochunk scholar Amy Lone Tree writes that museums have played a major role in dispossessing and misrepresenting Native Americans, and this has been a critical part of the identity of Euro-Americans, like me. Since Europeans first realized that the world is much larger than they thought, Europeans have colonized North, Central, and South America. North America is still controlled by settler colonialists uh, since Canada and the United States are both settler colonial countries. As kids, we're taught about colonization in school with images of heroic white men who bravely conquered the Wild West. But these stories don't show the violence, oppression, and white supremacy involved. And they don't show that colonization is still ongoing in North America. Settler colonialism is a structure, not an event which cannot be reduced to the merely unfortunate birth pangs of the country that remain in the distant past. The United States and Canada were founded upon racism and violence against indigenous people, which continues to this day in different forms, like institutionalized racism and sexual violence against indigenous women and girls. Colonization is here and now, even after all these years, but we'll dive deeper into settler colonialism in a different post. Back to museums. The museums most often seen in Western countries like the United States are unsurprisingly Western museums. Their employees are generally mostly white and from the dominant culture like me. Because of the staff's own bias, Western museums have been guilty of representing non-Western peoples through an ethnocentric lens, which means presenting people of different cultures with all the stereotypes and assumptions that museum staff themselves have about other people. For hundreds of years, museum curators have organized artifacts according to what they thought were real universal themes, including race or evolutionary stage, in which white Europeans and white settlers were at the top, which is a racist and disgusting classification that can still be seen in museums today. One example that you can go and see for yourself is the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, uh, DMNS for short, which features exhibits on dinosaurs, wildlife, outer space, minerals, and Native Americans. Walking through the museum, visitors have to walk past science and wildlife exhibits filled with taxidermy animals, rocks, and model spaceships in order to get to the North American Indian Cultures exhibit. This shows how museums have treated indigenous cultures as natural, animalistic, completely other, and classifiable alongside extinct animals and outer space. Anthropologists have collected indigenous artifacts for centuries and then donated or sold these objects to museums, exploiting and profiting off of other cultures as a career. Anthropologists have tried to salvage the most authentic cultural artifacts from indigenous groups, thinking that indigenous ways of life were disappearing when what was actually happening was the governments of Canada and the United States were trying to forcibly assimilate indigenous peoples into the dominant culture, literally trying to erase the very people and ways of life that create the objects which are valued in museums as exotic and primitive. And this extremely problematic process influenced the exhibits themselves, which has changed how the public understands indigenous people. <clears throat> Settler colonialism and genocide of indigenous peoples has meant that white people often only see indigenous cultures inside of museums, behind glass and with a little plaque that's supposed to explain their significance. This keeps indigenous people frozen in time. The world changes, but the people and cultures exhibited don't. You can imagine the influence of these exhibits on how the public thinks about indigenous peoples, which is exactly why we need to change them. And that's where museum anthropology comes in. Museum anthropology turns the museum into the field site, where other anthropologists, like archaeologists or linguistic anthropologists, might go to a dig site or to a community to do their research. Museum anthropologists go to a museum to study what happens there. This is a breakthrough in holding museums accountable. Museums aren't just places for research to be shown to visitors, they're places for research to be done. 
For my master's research, I studied the Canadian Museum for Human Rights, a large museum in Winnipeg focused on exhibiting human rights issues across the world. I interviewed staff members and learned how they decide what to exhibit, who to work with, what art and artifacts to showcase, and just generally how they do their jobs. I could have also interviewed visitors to see what they thought about exhibits and what they learned from them. I could have tried to speak with some of the groups represented by the museum and ask how they feel about the museum's exhibit on them. There are a lot of possibilities, but ultimately museum anthropologists want to learn what goes on behind museum exhibits and why. We think this is important because museums are generally very trusted by the public. People usually feel comfortable believing what they learn in museums, so it's extremely important what exhibits show to the public and how museums talk about people, particularly non-Western and marginalized groups, such as black people, indigenous people, other people of color, members of the LGBTQ community, and disabled people. At the end of the day, curators and other museum staff behind the scenes have so, so much more influence on exhibits than the general public thinks, and I'd like visitors to be more aware of that. So, next time, we'll talk more about how Western museums were created through the exploitation of non-Western peoples, and also the steps they're taking to get better. And to conclude, I would like to acknowledge that much of North America and other settler colonial areas remain unceded, unjustly ceded, and effectively stolen, while European colonial settlers continue to commit genocide against the peoples that are indigenous to these lands. My current home in Denver is on the lands of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute peoples. I'm filming this today on the lands of the Kohari tribe, the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina, and the Tuscarora Nation of North Carolina. All non-Indigenous residents of Indigenous lands are benefiting from the genocide and forced relocation of these peoples, whether we like it or not. Please consider donating to an Indigenous-run organization promoting Indigenous rights, sovereignty, and equity. If you're unable to donate, it's free to read, follow, and support them in other ways. Go to our website for some suggestions of people to follow and places to donate to. If you learned something from this video, please thumbs up and consider subscribing. You can find us on our website at slightlyproblematic.net or on social media at slightprob.net.